Good morning. Myself T. Salubhan Priya, Assistant Professor from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research. Today I am going to present a topic, a sequential circuit from the subject Digital Electronics. So let us move on to the topic. All the uh, digital circuits are basically categorized into two types. One is combinational logic, another one is sequential logic. So in case of combinational logic, the output of the circuit will be decided by the present input, which means consider which means consider this is a circuit, it will get the input from the user and it performs the operation and it produces the output to the user. That is the basic feature of the combination logic. It doesn't bother about the previous output. So, the basic building block of uh, combinational circuit, which means to design combinational circuit, we are using logic kits. So, logic kits act as a basic uh, fundamental building block of the combinational logic. So, here it mentioned clearly, output depends only on current input. And uh, it doesn't use any memory because we are not storing any previous output. Just it gets the input from the user and it performs the operation and it produces the output to the output unit. So, no need of memory here. And the uh, example for combination logic is adder, subtractor, multiply, all this operation comes under combination logic because for adding two values, we are getting two values from user and it performs addition operation and it gives the addition value to the user output unit. So, we can say it is a combination logic. So, logic gates are basic building block is used to uh, design the combination logic. In case of sequential logic, the output depends not only the current input but also the past values, past output values. So, output not only depends upon current input, it also depends upon the previous output. For example, counter is the best example for sequential logic for example if uh, 0 how can we count the value from 0 if you add 1 to 0 means you will get 1 again if you add 1 to that 1 means you will get 2 again if you add 1 to that 2 means you will get 3 okay so likewise we can perform the counter so for this this is the input this one is input and this one is the previous output okay here this is input and this too is the previous output. So by adding the previous output with new input, we can get the next output. So that is the difference between combination logic and sequential logic. So here the main thing is it doesn't depend upon only the current input, it also, also use the previous output. So best example for sequential counter is counter. Sequential circuit is counter need some type of memory to remember. So, we have to use memory in combinational circuits. We are not using any such memory. Here, we are using memory to remember the previous output because by using previous output only, we are getting the next output. So, to store that intermediate value, we need of memory here. So, the important point in uh, sequential logic is we have to use memory here to remember the past input values. And the basic building block of sequential circuit is latches and flip flop. In combinational circuit, logic gates are basic building block and sequential circuits, latches and flip flop are the basic building block. Okay. So, this is the uh, block diagram of uh, sequential circuit. So, com combinational circuit without uh, memory element, we can say it is a combinational circuit. If you are using a memory element means we can say entire circuit is a sequential circuit. See in combinational circuit, the input is given by the user and it performs the operation, addition, subtraction, whatever it is and it produces the output to the output unit that is combinational circuit. But in case of sequential, we are using an element, a memory element here, so which is used to store the intermediate output. For example, if you are performing counter, so first 0 will be here, I am giving 1, so output is 1, again this 1 is stored here. So again the next time the 1 is going here and I am giving input 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So output is 2 given to the output unit as well as to storage element 2. Again this 2 will be going inside the combinational circuit 
uh, again i am giving no in, in input 1 so 2 will be added with 1 and the output is 3 it will give to the output unit as well as the 3 is stored in the storage alone likewise the sequential circuit will perform the operation so we can say this is the entire uh, circuit is the sequential circuit so this is the basic building block of block diagram of sequential circuit so the concept i already explained the logic circuit remembers the past input and the past circuit state that is previous output okay so here we are using a feedback link that is this link we can say it is a feedback link i am giving the input uh, uh, past input present in previous input again to the circuit so this link we can say it is a feedback path okay next one is storage element or circuit that are capable of storing binary information memory okay the storage elements are circuit that are capable of storing binary information memory means this memory element so we need a storage element to store the values okay memory element so this is the basic concept of sequential circuit and in sequential circuit we are having two types of circuit one is synchronous sequential circuit another one is asynchronous sequential circuit so first one is synchronous another one is asynchronous in case of sequential synchronous sequential circuit we can say the sequential circuit is synchronous in nature which means we are using clock signal here okay so whenever the clock signal is high the sequential circuit will accept its input and it produces performs the operation and it produces the output so we can say it is a synchronous in nature that is the required time interval will be given to the signal for example at a discrete instant of time each and every discrete instant of time the clock signal will be given to the signal to perform the operation so if the clock signal is not uh, given to the signal which means if the clock signal is zero means the circuit will not be enabled whenever the clock is the high the circuit will be enabled it can accept the input and uh, uh, it performs the action so clock will be given to the signal at discrete instant of time after some interval the clock will, signal will be given to the signal so it is synchronous in nature uh, coming to a synchronous sequential circuit it doesn't use any clock so we can say it is a clockless sequential circuit or asynchronous sequential circuit whenever the input comes to the circuit it can accept the in, in, input and it produces the output no such uh, uh, interval will be given to the circuit as synchronous but in synchronous if the input is uh, available also without the clock signal the circuit won't accept that in, input so that is the difference between asynchronous and synchronous sequential circuit so this is a, we can say it is a clock signal so whenever this clock signal is high so this is high whenever it is one the sequential sequential circuit will be enabled so if it is low means we can say it is zero if it is low for this time duration the synchronous circuit will be remain idle so it won't perform any action so this duration we can say one clock cycle so up to this we can say it is a one clock cycle so like this we are giving the clock pulse to the sequential circuit okay so as i already told um, basic building block of sequential circuit is either flip flop or latches mostly flip flop are used to uh, used in the sequential circuit which act as a memory element so here you can say it is a memory element okay so this flip flop is used to, to store the previous output so whenever the clock pulse is given to this flip flop it will gives the input to the combination circuit if the clock pulse is not given if the clock pulse is zero means the flip flop remains idle it won't give any input to the combination circuit or also it won't accept any input output from the combination circuit okay so from a clock signal with the pulse that occur at the fixed interval of time so during the fixed interval of time so up to this it will be one so during this interval it will be zero so clock signal will be remain idle for fixed intervals of time so for this uh, like this only we are performing the sequential circuit so next we can explain what is the memory element so without the memory element we can say it is a combinational logic we have uh, seen combinational circuit before itself so today we are going to discuss about flip flop and latches 
latches and flip flop both are same both are we can say it is a bistable elements why we are calling it as a bistable element in the sense which is used to, to store the binary information one bit binary information it can store either zero or one okay. both are used to, to store one bit information either zero or one and it uses the clock signal to accept the input okay and uh, flip flop the main difference between the flip flop and latches are flip flop is used as the clock signal and latches are used as the enable input enable input in the sense whenever the enable input is 1 the latches will be available when uh, whenever the enable input is 0 the latches won't perform any action it remains idle okay. but like clock signal the latches will not be uh, enable for discrete interval of time for example clock signal will be 0 and 1 for discrete interval of time it will remains 1 for for particular time and it remains 0 for particular time but in uh, latches it will be 1 or 0 okay so main difference is both are same both are used to store the one bit information and uh, flip flop is used clock signal and latches is used enable input okay so types of flip flop we are having four types of flip flop sr flip flop d flip flop jk flip flop and t flip flop sr flip flop in the sense set reset d means delay flip flop jk means jack and kilby flip flop it is a scientist name and t is toggle flip flop or trigger flip flop let me explain one by one so first before going to the types let me explain the basic flip flop circuit so flip flop circuits will be like this we can say it is a inter related circuit because the output of the one logic gate will be given to the another logic gate again this output will be given to the another logic gate so this we can say it is a interrelated circuit okay so s r that is set and reset name itself we can say set means 1 reset means 0 so here we are giving the input by using the clock signal timing diagram okay so let me explain the concept here so this is the example truth table just an example so first check this 1 and 0 so i am giving 1 and 0 s is 1 and r is 0 okay so here we are using nor gate in flip flop we can use either nor gate or nand gate okay x nor and nor x nand okay this is 0 and this is 1 okay so not of r nor gate is nothing but not of r whenever any one of the input is 1 here any one of the input is 1 the output of the nor, x nor nor gate is 0 because r gate of uh, in r gate truth table if any one of the input is 1 the output is 1 not of r in the sense any one of the input is 1 the output is 0 Okay. so this zero will be given to here so zero zero becomes one here so q is one and q bar is zero okay similarly given the give the next input i am giving the next input zero 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 zero. Okay. So whenever zero zero is given, previous input output is here one and here it is zero. Okay. Here zero. This output comes here zero one. So zero one in the sense one the output is zero. Okay. So if zero goes here, this input is output is goes here zero zero. So whenever both the inputs are uh, zero. the output of an or gate is 1 so again we are getting 10 okay so coming to the next input 01 s is 0 r is 1 okay if any one of the input is 1 the output is 0 see here 1 and 0 if any one of the input of nor gate is 1 the output is 0 obviously 
so this 0 comes here 0 0 is 0 uh, but output is 1 because not of r is 1 so q is 0 and q bar is 0 1 so we are got the 0 1 so next again coming to 0 0 again 0 0 see here so both values are 0 here it is 1 so I am giving 1 here 0 1 if any one of the input is 1 obviously the value is 0 here so this 0 comes here 0 0 is 0 not of that is 1 so here also 1 so you are getting 0 1 likewise if you give 1 also 1 1 also you will get 0 0 ok so this is the logic behind the flip flop so see this truth table we are having two issues see here if you are giving 1 0 means you will get an output 1 0 again I am giving 0 0 you are getting an in output 1 0 again I am giving 0 1 you will get an in output 0 1 0 0 0 1 so while seeing this uh, this 0 0 and last 0 0 fourth 0 0 if you are seeing this second 0 0 and fourth 0 0 we are getting different output but the inputs are same if you are given an input same input means you have to get a same output so this is the difference between combinational circuit and sequential circuit in combinational circuit is if you are given 0 0 whenever you will give the 0 0 you will get the same output but in sequential circuit you won't get same output because it depends upon the previous output so that is the main difference here see here 0 0 for this 0 0 the previous output is 1 0 so I am getting the same output here for this 0 0 your previous output is 0 1 so you are getting the same output here so in sequential circuit we are getting output based upon the previous output so that is the concept using here so this is the basic uh, flip flop circuit so in by this we can uh, use the types of flip flop we can change the types of flip flop so here we are having one issue why we are using the types of flip flop means we are having one issue because what is that issue is for example i am giving 0 1 as a first input okay and the second input i am giving 1 0 Okay, whenever I am changing the input means here see here if you are giving a second input as 0 0 means it will be easy because we need to change only one bit or else if you are giving 1 1 means it, this is also easy here also we have to change only one bit okay. if you are giving 1 0 means we have to change two bit this 0 becomes 1 and this 1 has to change 0 okay. in this case before changing the both the values if the flip flop accept the input means either it will accept 0 0 or 1 1 so the wrong input will be given to the flip flop instead of 1 0 it can receive 0 0 or 1 1 because 2 bit has to change within a clock cycle ok see here within this clock duration 2 bit has to change ok if the uh, bits are not changed within the clock signal means the, it remains uh, 0 the clock signal becomes 0 so by this time if it goes to uh, 0 0 will be goes to the flip flop or 1 1 will be goes to the flip flop so wrong prediction of input will be given to the flip flop so to avoid this condition we are using clock signal whenever the clock is enabled then only we can use the input Okay. so to avoid this situation this error we are using the clock sr flip flop here we are using any such clock duration this is the input of uh, r and input of s so we have to change both the pulse immediately means that time we will get a wrong prediction of input so to avoid that we are using the clock sr flip flop so this is the clock sr flip flop okay see here this is the clock whenever the clock is enabled the input will be given this is the flip flop structure so before that I am using one AND gate to use the clock pulse ok so whenever this clock pulse is enabled then only you will get the input to the flip flop ok so let me explain how the SR flip flop works 
okay so here we are using one and gate see check any other uh, state any state so consider this one consider this input q is 0 s is 1 and r is 0 q is 0 s is 1 and r is 0 okay i am giving the clock pulse here when q is 0 obviously it is 1 because it is a q bar okay so when i am giving the clock pulse is enabled here i will get 1 here also i will get 1 okay so 0 and 0 and if you perform and operation it will become 0 here 1 1 you will get 1 here okay Okay. So, one input of, I already told, any one of input of NOR gate is 1 means obviously you will get 0 here because not of R is 0. So, I am giving 0 here, 0 0 is 1 because not of R is 1. So, this is your output. So, this is your next state. Okay. So, likewise you have to check all the combination okay so how can we write this combination means it's nothing but qsr is a three bit combination so right from 0 to 7 this is 0 this is 1 2 and up to 7 so to table just write qsr q as q is the previous output okay sr is the input given by the user so write qsr and simply write three input combination input from 0 to 7 Q of T how to find out okay so I have explained how to find out let me explain another one C001 check this one 001 okay so Q is 0 S is 0 R is 1 so whenever the clock pulse is enabled whenever this is 1 and this is 1 both the AND gates are 1 means you will get 1 here here you will get 0 ok so coming to this an OR gate any one of the input is 1 obviously your output is 0 ok so this 0 comes here you will get 1 so here 0 here we are getting 1 so this should be complemented each other this is the important point so we have got the 0 here next state so the output is correct so likewise you can check the truth table ok so here we have to check one important point that is negative status why this is negative status in the sense just check this output 0 0 1 1 so q is 0 and s is 1 r is 1 so whenever clock pulse is enabled both the inputs are 1 okay see here whenever any one of the input is 1 in nor gate obviously you will get 0 here also 0 here also see here this q and q complement should not be same each other because q and q bar should be complemented each other if you are having 0 here means it should be 1 here but we are getting both the values are 0 so far you are using that is a negative status that is this is an indeterminate condition ok so here this is the drawback in SR flip flop we are getting indeterminate condition for two cases one is for 0 1 1 another is for 1 1 so whatever the input of Q that is 0 or 1 if both the SR inputs are 1 1 means we are getting the negative status ok see here here 0 also we are getting intermediate negative status for 1 also we are getting negative status so whatever the input of Q when both the input of SR is high means we are getting the negative status so we have to avoid that ok this is a drawback in SR flip flop okay so this is the block diagram for sr flip flop we are giving a clock pulse and this is uh, input and q and q bar is the output okay so for this we have to find out the characteristics equation characteristics equation nothing but just plot this value in the k map and find out the equation so two variable came three variable k map consider this negative status as don't care we can group that also so if you plot this value in three variable k map means you will get two groups so for this group you are getting s as the equation and this uh, this one group you are getting r 
bar cube equation we already know how to find out equation in k map next one we have to find out the characteristic table so characteristic table in the sense characteristic table is nothing but from this truth table we can construct characteristic table for 0 0 sr input what will be your q of t plus 1 okay so this is consider where 0 0 is there in truth table 0 0 here and 0 0 here okay so we are getting 0 here and 1 here so see whenever q is 0 we are getting q of t plus 1 also 0 whenever q of t plus uh, q is 1 we are getting q of t plus 1 also 1 so just write q of t so for 0 0 whatever the value of q of t we are getting q of t plus 1 okay so we can write q of t plus 1 okay next next case 0 1 0 1 see here here also 0 1 and here also 0 1 okay see the output of uh, q of t plus 1 0 0 so for both 0 0 1 whatever the value of q of t we are getting 0 so just write 0 here similarly for 1 0 here also 1 0 here also 1 0 i am getting 1 so whatever the value of q of t i am getting q of t plus 1 as 1 so just write 1 here okay so next condition 1 1 whenever uh, i already told whenever uh, s and r is high we can use intermediate state okay that is undefined state okay so q of t that is we are uh, getting the same value so there is no change already i told zero means reset and one means set so just write the operation so uh, uh, don't care means it is undefined okay so that is the characteristic table this is the characteristic equation we got from the truth table k map and next one is uh, excitation table excitation table also we can get from truth table that is for q and q of t plus 1 what is s and r value okay characteristics table is for s and r value what is your q of t plus 1 here for q of t and q of t plus 1 value what is your s or operation so that is the difference so he see here here also 0 0 and here also 0 0 so when q of t and q of t plus 1 is 0 means what is your s or value s or value is 0 0 and 0 1 so see s remains same so just write 0 r changes from 0 to 1 so write don't care okay so similarly write for next input for 0 1 q of t plus n t n t plus 1 is 0 1 so check here q of t 0 t plus 1 is 1 here so that is the only case that is 1 0 so write as 1 0 for 1 0 q of t plus 1 is 1 and q of sorry t is 1 t plus 1 is 0 okay so in this case which is 0 1 so only one case is there so write it as 0 1 okay so next one q of t plus t and q of t plus 1 both are 1 so both are 1 we are having two cases i think so one is here another one is here okay so here it is 0 0 and here it is 1 0 so s r remains same and uh, s changes from 0 to 1 so s is don't care and r is 0 so that is the sr flip flop so you have to construct the circuit and we have to write the truth table and this is the basic symbol basic block diagram and you have to find out the characteristics equation and from the truth table we can find out the characteristics table and excitation table okay so that is sr flip flop next one is d flip flop why we are moving to d flip flop in this delay flip flop why we are moving means we are having one drawback in sr flip flop i already told that is for uh, two input whenever s and r is high we are getting indeterminate condition so to avoid that we are going for d flip flop here we are not getting that condition okay so how we are reducing that means before uh, giving clock pulse directly to both the flip flop we are giving one not gate here 
so clock pulse should not be given directly here so here we are using only one input if b is input what is our condition if both the inputs are same we are getting indeterminate should not be there so both should not be high so to avoid that i am using one not gate here when the input is zero you will get obviously one so no two flip flop logic gate should not be get the same value so that is both are high so to avoid that we are using one so whenever zero is there it will be one whenever one is there it will be zero okay so no two will be given as one so likewise we can avoid indeterminate condition here okay here instead of nor gate i am using not nand gate okay we can also use nand gate here if you are using nand gate means you have to use nand gate here also if you are using nor gate means you can use and gate that is and nor flip flop or nand nand flip flop if you are using nor means you have to use nand and here if you are using nand means here also you have to use nand here okay so now explain the truth table see this truth table here we are having two one input and the previous output is q so write q and d here we have written two input sr and previous output is q so just write we have written three input combination here we are having only two so just write two input combination okay 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 we have to find out the t of plus 1 so let me explain one uh, any of one value 0 and 1 q is 0 and uh, d is 1 okay so this clock pulse is 1 this will be 0 sorry this will be given to here also it will get zero here okay so here also one and here also one both the values are one and gate is one not uh, nand is zero so not of nand is zero here also it will get zero so and uh, not of nand is one here okay Uh, if any one input of uh, nand gate is zero obviously you'll get one here because not of nand is not of and is one in nand gate if any one input is zero you'll get zero but in nand gate you'll get one so we are getting one here so if you are giving one means both the inputs are one so you'll get zero here so it is complemented to each other likewise we can get all the inputs here if both the inputs are one means you will get you will not get the indeterminate condition okay so the error disadvantage in sr flip flop is overcome here okay so next one likewise the same manner we have to find out the characteristics equation this is the block diagram is basic symbol for uh, d flip flop so we can find out the characteristics equation and also we can find out the characteristic table for uh, d what is our q and q of uh, q of t plus 1 see here whenever d is 0 you are getting 0 q of t plus 1 is 0 whenever d is 1 q of t plus 1 is 1 so there is no change we can write as it is okay so next flip flop is jk flip flop so why we are using jk flip flop that is we have overcome all the disadvantage in d flip flop itself why we are coming to jk flip flop in the sense in d flip flop you are using only two inputs okay you cannot use three inputs uh, one input is previous one uh, previous output only one input we are giving only one input is given by the user another one is previous output so if you want to give two input means uh, we have to use some other flip flop so far we are going to the jk flip flop that is jack and kilby in flip flop so here uh, we have to uh, avoid that uh, this indeterminate condition also we have to use the two inputs so to avoid that we are using this feedback link here i am giving this output to nand gate or and gate also so before we are giving only to flip flop so here we are giving to and gate also so this feedback is used to overcome the disadvantage of indeterminate condition okay so here we are using three inputs combination so the three uh, truth table this is a truth table so one is previous output another one is two input okay so see here j and k is input 
and uh, 0 is the q is the output previous output so write j, q j k write 3 input combination from 0 to 7 so let me explain this condition here we are getting indeterminate in um, sr flip flop okay q is 0 k is 1 j is also 1 okay whenever the clock pulse is enabled it is 1 so q is 0 means obviously q bar will be 1 okay so this one will be goes here and this 0 will be goes here so here sorry 0 so here the output of AND gate is 0 because any one of 0 is 0 it is 0 here it is 1 okay in OR gate if any one of the input is 1 obviously the output of NOR gate is 0 here okay this 0 comes here you will get value 1 so this is the Q of T plus 1 and we are getting complemented value here so the drawback is avoided here okay and we are using 3 input so drawback in D flip flop is we are using only one input and drawback in SR flip flop is that is indeterminate case both are avoided in JK flip flop. So for this truth table you have to find out the characteristic table and characteristic equation. Characteristic equation is nothing but just plot this value in three variable K map and we are having two groups. So equation is JQ bar and K bar Q and characteristic table I already told. For JK input, what is your Q of next and Q of T? Okay, so same manner we can find out. See here, JK, both the values are 0 here and here. What is your Q of T plus 1? Q of T plus 1 is 0 and 1. See that is Q value. Whenever Q is 0, Q of T is also 0. Q is 1, Q of T plus 1 also 1. So we are getting the same Q value. Okay. So for 0, 1 you will get the 0. So just write 0 there. Here also we are getting 0. So 0. For set 1, 0 we are getting 1. So just write 1 there. And for 1, 1. What is your 1, 1? See 1, 1 condition. Here also 1, 1. And here also 1, 1. We are getting 1 here and 0 here just a complement of q so q is 0 here i am getting 1 q is 1 here i am getting 0 so we can say it is a q bar q complement so this is your characteristic table similarly you have to find out the excitation table so as i already told excitation is table is nothing but for uh, present state and next state what is your input we have to find out so uh, present state and next state this is 0 0 this is present state and next state 0 0 your value jk value is 0 0 and 0 1 so 0 k j remains same and k remains k changes from 0 to 1 so we can write 0 don't care so likewise you have to find out for 0 1 and 1 0 and 1 1 so let me find out for 1 1 see 1 1 here also 1 1 here also 1 1 see the value of q and q bar here is 0 and here is 1 here is 1 and here is 0 just a complement of q okay sorry you have to find out the excitation table present state and next state both are both should be 1 here present state here also 1 here also 1 and here also 1 and here also 1 see the j value uh, k remains same both are 0 j remain not same 0 to 1 it changes from 0 to 1 so for j it is don't care and for k it is 1 so likewise you have to find out the excitation table and this is a block diagram for jk flip flop okay so next we are moving to the t flip flop so we thought that uh, we thought that the deep uh, drawback of deep flip flop that is uh, we are using one not gate there so instead of that not gate we are uh, that is implementation is increasing more implementation because we are using instead of four uh, logic gates we are using uh, five uh, logic gates in deep flip flop so it will increase the time ex execution time so to avoid that we are using the t flip flop that is toggle flip flop the same manner in the jk flip flop instead of uh, two input i am using only one input here 
all the executions are same so see the truth table write the straight two input combination one is q another one is t so 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 so for this we have to find out the q of t so let me explain any one this 1 0 q is 1 and input is 0 if this input is 0 means you will get this is also 0 okay next one is clock pulse is 1 here also 1 and here also 1 and q of t plus this is 0 means obviously this will be 0 so here the output of AND gate so this is 1 and this is 0 both the output of AND gate will be get 0 because we are getting 0 ok so for this 0 if this ones come here means 0 1 any one of the nor gate is become 1 means obviously the value is 0 here so if this 0 comes here means 0 0 not, not of R, uh, nor is 1 here so you are getting 1 so next state is also 1 so likewise you have to process all this input for 1 1 we are getting 0 only not an indeterminate condition ok so same way we have to find out the characteristics equation and characteristics table and excitation table so just plot this value in two variable k map only two group is there so just write the equation of this one and uh, for 0 0 see here characteristic table for present state uh, for input and present state what is your uh, present state and in, uh, next state see here for 0 q and q bar is 0 0 for 1 q and q bar is 0 1 for 1 q1 q bar is 0 1 for 0 0 0 and here also 1 1 so just write the change the truth table and return and you can write uh, q bar q of t plus 1 alone no need to write fully okay next one is excitation table excitation table is q of t and q of t plus 1 what is our t value okay so here q of t and q of t plus 1 so see here 0 0 so t value is 0 for 0 1 your t value is 1 that is 1 for 1 0 t value is 1 for 1 1 t value is 0 so the same truth table only the format is characteristic table. how to write this characteristic table format and excitation table format. so this is the block diagram so that's about that's all about sequential circuit and flip flop